overwhelm your desire with the energy of your words and you will see the magic happen. The law of conservation of energy or the first law of thermodynamic states, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. So, your words are not empty nothingness lost into the void once you speak them. They forever dwell in the ether or the universal mind and can be manifested into your world if they made strong enough impression on your subconscious mind. Or they have enough energy now to affect the fate of the collective, or you continue to speak them with persistence like the voodoo magicians do, to harm their victims. There is immense power in locking yourself in isolation and repeating a phrase with strong intent for a long time. Just like Dr. Robert Millikan did, as mentioned by Neville Goddard in one of his lectures. Millikan grew up in abject poverty and wanted wealth more than anything. But he wanted it with integrity. Thus, he locked himself for several hours in a room and repeated this statement with conviction. I am earning a lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. And his strong and pure intent manifested him a Nobel Prize and millions with integrity as he served humanity with his work. You see, your words are instructions to the unseen power that is greater than you. As Jesus said, I and my Father are one, but my Father is greater than I. This greater self works the magic. Provided that you supply it with your intention strengthened with conviction. This unseen ether, superconscious, God, or the all then does the unseen work for you. While on your end, if you carry the energy of your words with you all day like a fragrance, you are inspired to do the work that is required of you and is in harmony with your desire. Hence you and the infinite work together to align the seen and the unseen to bring forth your desire. Your words can harm someone or heal you. They can manifest hell and heaven for you equally. As Neville stated, you are the operand power. The all or the infinite has given you the freedom of choice to choose a unique experience for it. Thus, your greater self or subconscious is neutral and doesn't impose its will upon you. It's a creative medium, you are the operand power or the potter who molds the clay into a shape. And for that, your word is a magnificent tool. As Hermes Trismegista said, man is given the gift of speech and mind that makes him equal to the immortals. That is, your word when spoken dwells in your vortex as Abraham Hicks teaches or the ether that Napoleon Hill talks about in Think and Grow Rich. It has many names. But to be precise, word is energy. And energy can only be transmuted from one form to another. It cannot be created or destroyed according to the law of conservation of energy, later known as Newton's first law of thermodynamics. Thus, your word dwells in the ether, infinite intelligence, mind of God, forever. If it was spoken with strong enough conviction, or with little to no resistance, it manifests physically. Or if you are persistent with your word and keep on charging it with energy, it will invariably manifest in this physical world. But do not think for one second that a word not spoken with conviction is useless. Not at all. As Florence Kovalshin said in her book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, the subconscious mind has no sense of humor, and people often joke themselves into unhappy experiences. And if you speak about another, your words get collected into the thought forms of similar energy. So if you hate a race, nation, religion, and speak the words of contempt towards them, your word has now been collected into the infinite in the form of a thought form. This thought form contains all the hate that has been spoken by humanity collectively towards a specific target. Thus, you send your energy to the hate monster that will eventually lead to some sort of violence, either against or from that race or nation, that the words of hate were spoken for. This concept is also mentioned in the book Reality Transurfing by Vadim Zeeland. But he calls these thought forms pendulum, swinging in the polarity of its accumulated energy. There is a huge political pendulum of Democrats versus Republicans. The religious pendulum of Muslims versus Jews versus Christians. The harrowing pendulum of Israel versus Palestine. You get the picture. So, when you talk hate against any of them, you are not doing any favor to anyone, but adding more firewood into the fire. Your word is magic, bestowed upon you by the infinite. It is not meaningless and empty like most of us think. This mistake has cost humanity so much pain and suffering. Just because we are ignorant of our word and our supernatural metaphysical powers. That is, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The law of assumption that Neville Goddard talks about is the basis of it. You only speak what you have assumed to be true in your life. And that assumed truth no matter real or not, gets manifested into your life invariably. Our gift of speech and mind is being abused by majority of us. And it is breeding chaos into this world. 
it is time for us to honor this gift bestowed upon us by maturing as a race. As we are much more than what we have been led to believe. Thus, we have the power to manifest heaven on earth, or destroy ourselves. The reason why I try to paint a picture of your word being as energy is for you to understand that this primordial energy can be considered God or the essence of God. As the law of conservation of energy makes it clear that energy cannot be created. Thus, the primordial source is one, and that is the all, in hermetic terms. Thus, this source cannot have created anything other than from itself. Using its energy. By changing a part of its energy into a different form that you are. And your word, when you speak, is a form of this same primordial energy. Changing its form from vibration that comes from your vocal cords into the ether as instruction to the all to manifest what you speak. You are just a potter, using the clay of God to fashion beautiful or ugly creations. So why not be wise and create something of beauty that you would be delighted to see upon completion? Why not use this gift of speech and mind and manifest heaven on earth for others and yourself? How do you go about doing that? By using the right words every day to supercharge your desires. Know definitely of what you want as Neville suggested in all of his books and lectures repeatedly. As that clears up your intention as to what you want and fast tracks its manifestation. Once you know what you want, write it down on a piece of paper. Read it every morning right after waking up. And write before sleep at night. And any time during the day when you feel like the energy is diminishing, so that you can replenish it. Carry this energy like a delightful fragrance with you all day. And speak only of your desires as though you already possess them. Because you literally do. The moment you speak it or imagine it, it is in your energy field. You carry an energy field around you all day that can be scientifically measured. Look into the works of Dr. Joe Dispenza in his book Becoming Supernatural. Where he demonstrates how your words affect your energy field in real time. Anyways, the point is, this energy you carry with you 24-7. Thus, the moment you speak of your desire, you have it, in the form of energy or inside your vortex, in Abraham Hicks terminology. This information field as David Ick calls it, lets the infinite know your intentions. Or it is an instruction set, a blueprint of your life to be manifested. And the more you speak it, the more you charge it with energy. Thus, your persistence in your assumptions manifests them without fail into your life. This is why Neville Goddard warned us to never entertain a negative thought. As anything you pay attention to, you lend your energy to it. And it grows in your vortex till it becomes a physical manifestation. It is not about denying all the negativity and not allowing negative emotions to be expressed. It is about not giving them a permanent place in your consciousness by allowing them to dwell in you for long. Let them come and then let them go. You are an alchemist, forever changing the energy of source from one form to another. It is high time you realize it and claim your power as a master alchemist. An immortal who has been bestowed the gift of speech and mind. So awaken O immortal. And speak your power into existence.